What's up coach? In today's video, we're talking with Desiree Martinez about how to optimize and monetize your Facebook. So are you ready? Let's get started. What's up, coach? I'm Beverly Simpson, the owner of B Simpson Fitness and the founder of the PT Profit Formula and PT Profit Podcast. I'm super excited to roll this interview that I did on my podcast with Desiree Martinez. In this interview, we went deep on ways that you can get started on the Facebook platform, specifically using Facebook pages. We talked about the different strategies that you could be using for things like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and we even talked about TikToks. So if you like this video, be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and tap that bell to be notified when the next video comes with the latest, greatest tips and tricks for you to grow your fitness business. Also, you're going to want to stay till the end of the video because we talked about whether or not you should be on TikTok and how to use the TikTok platform. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll that interview. Hi, 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 Desiree. Thanks so much for joining me here on the show today. How are you? I'm super excited to be here. Nothing like starting your day off with with a good conversation to pump people up about how they can grow their business. I love it. I love it. I love it. So let's just dive right in. Can you please share with my audience a little bit about who you are and who you serve and how you got there? Yeah. So I've been a social media marketer for over 10 years. I started back in 2010, very much so on accident. Um, I actually had big dreams of being an animator for Pixar and Disney. And I graduated college into a tanking economy. And so I had to like quickly pivot and figure out like, what could I do different? And I started to network with people to look for graphic design opportunities. And people kept asking my people, I'm just like adults and like air quotes at the time I was like 24. They're like, what's this Facebook thing? And I was like, mm, what you, what you doing with my Facebook bubble people? And what had happened was Facebook had become um, available for everybody that did not have, like it used to be, you had to have a college email to get on. And then it, they, they pivoted into like everyone, anyone can have a Facebook. And so all these people were like, how do I use this? What's the deal? Um, how do I, I, my kids are talking about it. Like, is there a business opportunity here? And so I started networking with people to teach them how to use Facebook. And one day this guy I was talking with was like, Desiree, you should do this as a job. I looked him deadpan in the face and I was like, mm, no one's going to pay me to be on Facebook. And I quite literally eat those words every single day because that's exactly what I do for a job now. Uh, I help businesses grow on social media with better content marketing while also putting military spouses to work anywhere that they're stationed around the world as social media managers. And a lot of how I get my leads and how I have established myself as an expert in my industry is with video marketing. And I know that we're going to be talking a lot about different kinds of ways that we can use video marketing. So I'm not going to go into too many details, but that's how I got started. And that's who I serve. That's amazing. I love that. And I know that right before we hit record, we were talking, I was just sharing a little bit with you about you know, people in my audience. And what I have found is that people tend to navigate towards one platform, right? They get really good at something like Instagram. And then this is where they start networking and connecting. And then they start developing like a dogmatic bias against the other platforms. Like, oh, Facebook is not fun. It's super negative, which is ironic because when it comes to Facebook advertising, you can't say one negative thing at all, right? And Facebook really works hard to keep that platform very positive. Anyway, that was a side note. But um, what happens to a lot of personal trainers and physical therapists is that they start thinking that ah, Facebook's old. Facebook's, you know, 2005, 2008. I need to focus my attention on to newer, better, not recognizing the power that Facebook specifically has. And especially now with all these, with the what, the video watch opportunities. I think that people decided somewhere along the line that Facebook didn't work because they were doing it wrong. Mm. And I think that that's what happened. And don't get me wrong. We live in a, in our news feeds are super polarizing and everyone has an opinion. Everyone's a Facebook and Google doctor these days or a politician and it's super annoying. It is. There's no denying that. But 
there's also still a lot of really great business being done on Facebook. And it's just a matter of like, how are you doing it different? And like, how are you standing out and what value are you offering that allows your message to get seen through the junk? And I think that that is one of the things that people like get frustrated about because like you can't game it. Like, I'm sorry. Facebook is harder than Instagram. Facebook is harder than Twitter. Facebook is harder than LinkedIn. Facebook takes work. Facebook's the OG, right? Like Facebook Mm -hmm. is also the most complex, you know, between having personal accounts and pages and groups and you have Facebook watch and you have marketplace. Like there's just a lot of different things going on. And so I think it just can kind of be overwhelming for people. And so therefore they say, no, I'm not going to do it. Mm. It's right. It's true. It's so true. Especially now I hear a lot, you know, Facebook pages are dead. No, you're just doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So if you wouldn't mind, can you just share with us, like if you were a brand new trainer or a brand new person coming to Facebook, where would you start? So I would start with a two part approach. I would be using my, I would be using the crap out of my Facebook page because there are so many advantages to Facebook pages where you can like, by building your page, you can target a specific area, especially if like you do in-person stuff or like you're like the San Diego expert or the middle of nowhere, Idaho expert or like whatever, like wherever you guys are, you can like really narrow in on that. And like Facebook allows that like geographical help of where you are. I would also post a lot. A lot of people don't realize that you should actually be posting multiple times a day on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm saying that is because once you start posting, once you start building a following, you're going to be able to go into your Facebook insights and really see, okay, where are, when are people going to be on Facebook? And it's going to tell you your peak times. And oftentimes people are on, especially nowadays, people are on a lot more than usual. So if you're just posting once a day, That's a really big missed opportunity to reach people when they're choosing to be on. Because even throughout COVID and all this that we're doing, we have going on right now that's interfering with our sort of our rhythms, people will still have patterns of like first thing in the morning, later at night, lunchtime, and those kinds of things. That's three missed opportunities if you're only posting once a day. So I think that people get really like, oh, Facebook's going to penalize me and, and this, this, and this is like, no, you need to be posting more so that you can get the data to figure out what, it, what a piece of content are you making that are actually the kind of piece of content that your audience wants. And so my next strategy would be a combination of pre-recorded video and live video. I would be using live video because the Facebook algorithm really likes that live video is an opportunity for people staying on the platform longer and it gives them an opportunity to like, they can use their push notifications to let people know that you're there. And when you're live, you can go to like your Facebook group or your personal profile and do like a watch party or share it so that more people can get on board with what you're doing and share. And so what I would do would be like a workout of the day kind of a thing, or like a stretch of the day or like something that would, that, really relates to like what my niche is and who I serve and dive into that like very specifically for like five to 10 minutes. And then with the pre-recorded video, that's when I would be focusing on things that are search engine optimization specific um, because I believe all marketing strategies are multi-prong, but I would start with something that's like, what's something people search for and that I can solve for them with this video. And I would build that up because Ultimately, what we're trying to get you to do besides grow your Facebook page is one, make Facebook happy because the Facebook algorithm wants long form videos. They want people to have reasons to stay on the platforms longer. People stay on the platforms longer by, by watching more content. So the more time they're watching your video, they're going to then go to the next thing or the next thing after watching your video, after being on for like, you know, three minutes, five minutes, however long your video is and then go to the next person versus just being this like thumb scrolling pattern. And then the second reason that it's important is because this is a long-term goal for your Facebook page is to monetize your Facebook page. 
Yes. I can't wait to get into that because I'm, I'm actually most excited about that because I know it's, you know, you hear people out in the marketing industry, they're all talking about monetize your YouTube channel, monetize your YouTube channel, not recognizing that you can actually monetize your Facebook page as well. It's a huge missed opportunity. And so I definitely want to get that, especially as you start getting, cause like some, one of the things that I talk about is you're either going to get paid traffic or organic traffic. That's how we're going to lead it. That's how you're going to start to grow your audience or the top of your funnel. And Facebook has a ton of really affordable paid opportunities, which is then going to help you grow that audience and lead it to that watch or lead to the monetizing your Facebook page. So I definitely want to get into that. But before I move on, just real quick, based on what you said, how many times a day do you typically recommend someone post uh, on their Facebook page? And do you think there's a difference between whether you're starting versus having a seasoned Facebook page? I think when you're starting, post more. But it should not be just like the me, me, me show. It should be a lot of sharing of content. And by sharing of content, I don't mean going to Google and finding links because links are actually the lowest performing pieces of content on Facebook. It's going and finding other brands and businesses that align with your mission, objective, vision that you can share things. So if you're focusing on like being a local expert, share other local things that are going on, like maybe your favorite healthy food restaurant, or maybe uh, your favorite uh, place to get gear, or like, this is my favorite smoothie spot, like that kind of stuff. Like sharing content from those places will help with your reach. Um, giving tips, inspirational quotes, um, spending just that time on the platform, being valuable and relatable. And it's like, I know that it's a little cliche of like the 80, 20 rule, but when you're sharing 80% of informational value driven content and then promoting yourself 20% of the time, you are still 100% be positioning yourself as an expert. And so it's one of those things, like not everything is about sales. A lot of times things are about expertise that way, when someone is triggered to need you or want you there's no one else that they could think of needing. Or maybe it's like, it's like that idea too. Like if you're searching for something or you're watching a lot of something, Facebook is more likely to serve that other content to support it. And that applies to business pages, not just like news. So like, if like you start watching, you know, chiropractic videos or smoothie videos or like DIY fitness videos or something, your content will get fed to those people in addition to it. So that, that's a lot of like what you want to be, you know, thinking about for when you're doing it. And then once you have a base of followers, then I would go into the analytics and see, okay, what that, and that is when you should determine what your strategy should be. Usually the bigger your audience is, the more you should be posting. Mm -hmm. That's what, how I kind of look at it. Because if I have a thousand or 10,000 people that follow my page, I really cannot expect all 1,000 to 10,000 of them to be on Facebook at 9.30 a.m. to watch, see my post. Mm -hmm. It's unrealistic. That's not how people pa people's patterns work. Additionally, everyone's 9.30 is different around the country if you're doing a national brand or even, or even harder, an international brand. So that, that's how I kind of think about it. And that's how I find that works best for businesses. That's great. And just so I know this is kind of like a sidestep question, but I know that they're kind of related, but would you say the same thing about Instagram that you need to be posting multiple times a day on Instagram? Instagram is a totally different like thing. Like I said, no one strategy works for all of the platforms. Like, I, mm -hmm. okay. I stand corrected. No one like posting strategy or message layout or hashtags or link strategy is the same for every platform. However, you can take one piece of content and post it to every platform within the confines of the platform's successful like layout, like Instagram, what works best are squares and like the little bit taller, the, uh, the four by five images. Right. Um, 
You want to do hashtags, longer posts, the dots in between your paragraphs, adding emojis, the first 115 characters are the important parts, like those kinds of things. But Facebook, Facebook, it's longer posts, put a link at the bottom, um, you know, yeah. bullet point. It's, it's some of the similar Instagram. Sh- now that they have hashtags too, you know, you can add hashtags at the bottom of your post as well. Just not the whole like 30, um, mm-hmm. you know, using a really powerful image, but mainly a video that can support it. That's going to do better. Mm-hmm. It's just adapting your content, to each platform. So to say you should post more on Instagram versus posting more on Facebook I find that it's just a, for my brand, it has been just as effective to post once a day on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Yes. But to very frequently post stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so like, that's, that's how I, I do that. And I know a lot of Instagram experts and I know a lot of, of my fellow social media marketers and fellow creators once a day is plenty, but mm-hmm. where the magic is, is in the stories. Yeah. I love that you said that. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to ask because I teach, you know, first of all, the bare marketing principle is guess, test, and assess, right? At the end of the day, all we're doing is trying on this strategy. And then we have to go back and look at the numbers and the analytics because they will tell you how successful it is. And I found that every time I would double post on Instagram and reset the algorithm, I was losing losing, I was potentially losing traction on a very powerful post that I had posted earlier that morning where, when, if I had just let it season, I might've gotten a little bit more traction on it. Yeah. I don't, I feel like it goes into different kinds of brands. Like I think if you're uh, like a merchant, Mm -hmm. if you have a product that, and like the posts are designed to like sell the product, maybe there's value in posting like two or three times a day. If you're a news outlet of some kind, like if you're like you're a resource for things like your local news or you're a, a very active blog or you're blogging multiple times a day, you're like, you're the skim or a scary mommy, like those kinds of brands. Yeah. Totally post multiple times a day. But if you're a local chiropractor or, you know, PT person, like just once a day is plenty, totally yeah. plenty. Mm -hmm. We use those stories. Please use stories. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. But one of the things that you did say, and we are kind we are talking about today, which is that we want to be, we want to post in integrity to the platform. So while that Instagram toggle is there for you, it's much better to just copy and paste the same post with maybe a different photo and post integrity in integrity to the Facebook platform. Yeah. I even say like, so what my strategy is for multi-posting the same content is I take an image that I've done and I, I, um, resize it for every platform. So I usually end up creating three versions of every, for, of one image. So I'll do a newsfeed, a square and a story for those images. And then I make sure to adjust my messaging appropriately. And I always make sure that my posts have a call to action that makes sense for the platform. So if I'm my call to action is like to comment or like, if you feel me hit that heart button or whatever, that's what I'm putting on Instagram. When I'm doing Facebook, usually my call to action is to like, and it's ask them a question to get them to comment. You know, when I'm on Twitter, the call to action is usually just kind of like implied of it's just such a simple message. Usually it's like to click a link or, um, comment or share, let me know kind of a thing. It's just a lot of statements I think do really well on Twitter more than like other kinds of content. And then LinkedIn, it's really just about like connecting and building those relationships. The most time people are doing on LinkedIn is hitting like those like buttons and those views are kind of like what do it. But the more you engage with the post, like if that like button gets hit or someone comments on your post on LinkedIn, what happens is that not only does your network of people get to see your post, but that person who liked that activity shows up on their news feed for LinkedIn and all of their LinkedIn network sees it. So it's incredibly powerful to, um, when you're doing like B2B business, use LinkedIn in that way. So again, it's really just about respecting the platform, but keeping, I think you can still keep the core message and the core image. 
That's good. That's really good. All right. So let's dive into monetizing our Facebook. Yes. Can you talk, can you talk a little bit about like, where would you start? How powerful is that? And so in order to monetize on Facebook, it's very, there are some similar limitations to YouTube about how you have to have a certain number of followers and you have to have a certain number of watch time. The watch time though is based on the length of your video. So this is what I talk about when you're starting off on Facebook or wherever you are, it's, you have to be having your strategy focused on the long-term gain of trying to get Facebook monetization. And so the long-term gain is, okay, all of your videos are going to need to be three minutes long. Like they can't be under three minutes. If you make shorter form videos, um, know that that could hurt your reach. I have a lot of data that supports that those little short social clips are great, but if you're also pairing it with long form content, Facebook doesn't want to see that short form content. They want the long stuff. So your videos need to be at least three minutes long for them to run ads on because what's going to happen is that one minute you're as when the Facebook ad happens. So Facebook measures the success of your videos in three parts, three seconds, 10 seconds, 60 seconds. So Unlike with the YouTube video where you're trying to give your most value packed stuff like at the end of the video to, and calling out be like, make sure you stay tuned in the video for my super top secret workout tip or physical activity tip or whatever it is to get them to stay longer in Facebook. That first three to 10 seconds is when you should be giving the most value because that's what Facebook is measuring for your success on the video platform on, on the platform because they want to, to, to you to be pulled in. It needs to be captivating and action packed enough to get someone to stop their thumb scroll. Cause when people are on YouTube, they're not really thumb scrolling, right? It's mm -hmm. totally different activities. Um, so that's what I would do to start out. So that's the foundation pieces. So to like kind of recap that videos at least three minutes long and you need to give your most action packed pieces of content in the first three, 10, 60 seconds, because that's the measurement that Facebook has for watching your videos. Usually long videos on Facebook do not perform well. It's just such a big difference too, between like a video and a live. Mm -hmm. And, and so really know that those are very distinct differences. Um, so really pay attention to that. Um, and so then when you're trying to grow your page, so then you have to have a minimum, I believe of 10,000 likes on your page. And then you have to have 30,000, um, minutes watched on your Facebook account, uh, on your Facebook page. And they have to be four to three plus minute videos before, fa before you can qualify for monetization. And so once you qualify, then you just have to apply. Mm -hmm. And unlike YouTube monetization, which is really easy, Facebook monetization is kind of like a bear. Like you have to like go through a lot of steps to get into it unfortunately. And I'm going to be actually doing a video about it soon. Great. But it's just one of those things. It's just kind of unnecessarily complicated. Like Facebook is trying to say that they want creators and they want to give you money for it. But for some reason, they're not making it easy. I cannot explain that. <laughs> it might be because they're just new at figuring it out themselves. <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, you gotta think it, it's, it makes complete sense. I'm making something on your platform and you're financially benefiting. Maybe you should pay the people that are making the content that you're financially benefiting from. That's what YouTube totally gets. And like, you can play with it, but it's still just one of those things. It's like, I don't understand why they just don't understand. Like with Facebook, with YouTube is really cut and dry. Thousand subscribers, 4,000 hours of watch time. And I get, like 30 per 35% of every sale and like you get 75, you get 65% of it. Like, I don't know. It's complicated <laughs> <laughs> for no reason or no reason. That's the story of Facebook though. I will say that I get, yes. I really get why people stay away from it. It's a beast. It is, but it is once you master it though, you almost can. Once you anything. get caught up to it, it's yeah. easy to maintain the course. Mm -hmm. I'm in a super unfair position, guys. I've been doing this for over 10, 11 years. I've been on Facebook since 2006. You know, like, I've kind of done it all on Facebook. So I get it. I watched a change. I watched things crumble and change and fall. And like, I remember 
when I started off my Facebook um, journey of like running it for businesses, we did these things called Facebook landing pages. And it would be when you would go to a Facebook page for the first time, you would be greeted with this landing page and it was a like gate, like mm -hmm. this page to get this cool offer kind mm -hmm. of a thing. And it worked great. And then Facebook switched to the timeline layout and mm -hmm. it completely devalued. It was, they, they became the apps. It completely devalued it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, welcome. That's, that's the, that's Facebook. <laughs> yes. And, but that's the fun of it. This is, you know, every time I look in ads manager, it looks different. <laughs> yeah, and so I think that that's you know that becomes part of the puzzle that becomes that becomes you know part of the fun and it's like I have to say like kudos to you because I loathe ads like let me create <laughs> all day for you I don't do ad life <laughs> <laughs> um I think for me the re I know I just love a puzzle I love you know trying to you know, solve something and figure it out. It's like, I just kind of live my life by that. Like once I figure it out, I'm like, great. What's the next puzzle? You know? Yes. I hear you. Uh, so, um, now one of the things that you said is that I didn't know, which is exciting to hear. And I do, I definitely want to learn more about it is that you said you want to have that sweet spot of three minutes, but not too long, because if it's too long, then you're not going to get no one's going to watch all the way through. Uh -huh. um, but that if you're combining it with that short 60 second, one minute, that that's a no go. But I think that the yeah. reason why people do that is because Facebook owns Instagram and on the feed, you can only have a 60 second clip. So do you suggest then that we don't put any one short one minute clips on Facebook and leave that only for Instagram? I think that this is going to be where you do what you say, where you guess, test, and assess. Um, yeah. I have found, and, and, and this is, you guys are going to laugh when you hear this. So, <laughs> um, one of the brands I work with, uh, is Braille skateboarding. Braille skateboarding is the largest skateboarding brand on YouTube. They are literally days away at the point of, at the time of this recording of hitting 5 million subscribers, but they had like a dead Facebook page with like over 130,000 followers at the time. And I'm like, why aren't you doing anything with this? Especially because you are monetized. And so I did a bunch of testing. And so what they would create for Instagram were these 15 to 20 second promo clips. So whenever you go to Braille's videos at the very beginning, it's like a montage and then it goes bing and it's the title of the video. And that was their teaser clip. And they would post that teaser clip on Instagram and they would, and then they would also share it on stories with swipe up all makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. Until you get to Facebook. So the people would, they would share this little short clip. And of course the link to the YouTube video and it would just get like shit reach. Like it was just really bad, really short ways to like do it. And I was like, this, there's a reason that this isn't working. These little short clips, like people don't want to be teased on Facebook. They don't, we don't live in a world anymore where we're like, we hype things up in that way. And so, and especially because Braille's audience knows they make a video every day on YouTube. And so I decided to cut that from the the plan after seeing that it was tanking and so i tested it with something different i started creating a gif from the video and ironically enough it also tanked and you want to know why because facebook reads gifs as short form video it's not considered an image it's not considered a post or something special it's there's three categories of content on facebook links, images, and videos. And a GIF is considered a video. And so when I was posting these GIFs, it was still tanking the reach and the engagement. And I was like, man, this is crazy that like this thing people love in the comments is tanking our engagement and our reach on the newsfeed. So then what I ended up doing to promote the video is I would take a photo and the photos promoting the video did fantastic. And so that's when I really started to realize. And then I would also try sharing like other short form videos 
every now and again, one short form video would just be amazing in performance, but it ha it was usually some like crazy trick or something someone really was doing. Like I remember one of them was like, this guy was skating this path and it was this really long, like bumpy, windy path. And if you were watching me, I'm making the motion with my hand and it just performed like unexpectedly well. Other ones are like someone was skating down like a, a, a highway with like this beautiful like mountain scene and it was just beautiful to watch. And it was like, who wants to skate here? Right. And it just did really well. But the constant that did well was posting two long form videos every single day on their Facebook page because they have a gigantic backlog of videos because they've been, they have over 4,000 videos on their YouTube channel. So mm -hmm. I was in a total, that's with one, they have like two different YouTube channels. So I was like, I was in a position where I could post old content to their Facebook page that performed quadruple what those short form videos were doing. And it got them to the point where they were making over $10,000 a month in Facebook ads mm -hmm. because they're sharing old content, the, the old long form content that their audience already loved. So mm -hmm. the story, I guess the moral of this is like you, again, I love your little, your little anagram of like uh, guess, test and assess because it's very true. But I can tell you, the moment you start posting long form content, Facebook is going to start devaluing your short form content mm -hmm. because they want to, they're essentially like <sighs> penalizing you for making bad choices because they want to, <laughs> <laughs> they want to monetize your content. <laughs> they're like, no, stop. <laughs> you know, give me the long stuff, you know, it's, it's like, give me the goods. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. I'm laughing so hard. Um, <laughs> uh, I, 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 know I know it's, I know that was a lot guys, but it's no, like, it's this, good. Is, this is what, I don't know, this is what I do. Um, is like, if Facebook knows there is an opportunity to monetize your content the, and they'll realize that the moment you start kind of steadily posting longer form content, they're going to, that's all they're going to want from you. Mm -hmm. It's good. Um, I'm, I am, I'm also going to ask you this question because I'm curious now if you, because there's two in terms of um, advertising on Facebook, there's two things that you can do. You can post it organically and then boost the post from the ads manager, not from that boost button. That boost button's not your friend. But uh, the other thing you can do is you can just go straight into ads manager and upload a, a piece of video, uh, like a 60 second clip essentially specifically for advertising. Does Facebook count that no. towards your watch time? Cool. No, it does not. Okay. Because if you are uploading directly to ad manager, it goes into like the different section of Facebook, right? What you're essentially, so you have to think of it, it, Facebook in different chunks. Like I said, in the beginning, there's so many different parts of Facebook. There's mm -hmm. pages, there's groups, there's marketplace, but where your videos live is in the watch feature and everyone is in watch. Once you post a video, personal page or business page, your videos go into the watch platform. Um, it used to be a separate thing just for pages, but they merged, they got rid of that. When you're posting a video for advertising, it goes into the advertising bucket. I think that the only, I'm not 100% sure, and I think this is something that you would probably know more about, is if you boost the post, the video, that might help increase your watch time. Okay, that's that's super helpful. The reason why I'm so anti that boost post is because you can't, you, you can't manage the targeting. You're basically saying to Facebook, like, hey, you just decide who is going to see this. And that can be powerful, but you want to be able to have a, just a little bit more control or insight into doing that. And I think what Facebook is doing, and I can appreciate this about them, but they're trying to help. And it's actually one of the things that I love about Facebook is that I know it seems really overwhelming at first, but it is one of the most user-friendly, you know, anybody can do it types it's of It's a really good way to broadcast. 
Correct. It's not a really great way to target. And even in my limited ad knowledge, I even know that. So if you're just like, especially if you're just growing or like, you're just like, I need all of the eyeballs, the boost button might have a place. So, (laughs) but that's why they, I think that's why they use that boost button is so that anybody can use it, but you can still boost a post to just and do it from the ads manager side. You'll be able to get in front of the eyeballs that you want as yeah. opposed to just trusting that Facebook's going to do it. Okay. So I love that. That's super awesome. Um, I know this is like a kind of a sidestep too, but I'm, I'm just curious since you are like very powerful and knowledgeable in all of the platforms, you know, we've seen a huge um, move now into TikTok. And I'm just a little bit curious because I look, I think about, you know, you're spending your energy on, you know, specific platforms where your people are hanging out and, and you kind of saw, you know, you kind of saw Snapchat come and then Snapchat kind of goes. So I'm curious what your, you know, thoughts are on TikTok specifically. Is this something that we should be putting our attention to? Okay. So Before you go to TikTok, before you invest the time and energy that another social platform, another video social platform requires, make sure you have a way or call to action to direct them to a a better platform. (laughs) I love TikTok. I, I got, I get sucked in like everybody else. Like I said, there's a stat that was at like an average, the average amount of time someone spends on TikTok when they open it is 53 minutes, 53 minutes of consuming 15 to 30 second clips. Like that's a lot of time. Never do Mm -hmm. it before bed. Never guys. (laughs) It's awesome. It is so awesome. And it is so user driven and it is so fun. And I know that Instagram is making a competitive extension to, uh, to TikTok, especially in the light of all of the potential like banning talk that we have from our, our, um, American administration. But, um, TikTok is a way to drive traffic to your other places. Like that's how I would really use TikTok. TikTok is where you can drive traffic to your YouTube channel, drive traffic to your Facebook channel, drive traffic to a a platform or a place where you can continue to engage with them. And then that's where you can sell and prove your expertise. I feel like if you're on TikTok, there's this combination expectation of like, yes, do fun videos where you're like, being quirky in your niche, right? Like we see that a lot with like nurses and I see a bunch of social media manager people where you like you, the yep, nope challenge. And you're like Mm -hmm. doing the like, yep, nope with the, with the fingers and stuff and all that kind of stuff. But, um, it's first and foremost entertainment focused. And secondly, it's, that's when like the other things ran like people, like hacks are really popular on TikTok. Um, entertainment though, is the number one objective that people go to TikTok for. So if you're going to be on TikTok, you have to find a way to be entertaining while also maintaining your brand. And then again, the objective needs to be to drive traffic to your other platforms where you can have like funnels and ways to connect and engage with them in like a different way. Mm, That's good. I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest. I have not yet I've opened up TikTok. That's about the extent. Yeah, I've made one video on TikTok and it was for a video for my YouTube channel about how to create videos for you. <laughs> and guys, as someone who's a video creator, yeah, it's a lot of work because it's like I have to practice, which I don't usually do with my YouTube videos because I'm like, I'm talking about stuff I know, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't script. So this is how I work. Um, and then it was like, then I had to like, practice and I had to do it. And I probably did it a couple times to make sure that it was right. And I had to go in and edit that video with the text and the places that I needed it to be. And it's just like, it's this whole extra thing. It's like a mini YouTube. It's like a concentrated mini YouTube. And I am just like, I don't have time for this ish 
And I'm just like, I'm too, I love the platform because it's fun. I don't have time to create on it in that way. Mm-hmm. And I put such a high value on my time and what I'm oh, doing sure. that. And so, so TikTok is just not a priority to me in that sense. Yeah. Okay. I love that. I love that. And I'm glad you said that because one of the things that I teach is like, listen, you got to go where your people are hanging out. Yeah. And I think that if you're in this specific space, test it. But I honestly don't think that people are probably, because it's such a younger demographic, like you're talking the under 35, really under 25 demo for TikTok. And you have to ask, are those people, are those people, are those people your customers? Are those people that pay you in some way, shape, or form? Because mm-hmm. I do believe there are different ways of payment. Mm-hmm. Like watching my YouTube videos is a way of payment for me, right? That's why mm-hmm. I have my email list. I send my email, my all my YouTube videos to my list, and they come out once a week. Because when they watch those videos, I get ad money. Um, the other things are like, okay, are they buying my book? Mm-hmm. Are they paying for? Are they gonna? Are these people that would pay for a course? Are these people that would pay? Are these people that are gonna sign up for an affiliate? I'm doing. Are they going to? pay for my expensive program are these people paying for coaching if your demo on if your demo on tiktok would do that do it spend that time there but if not put your efforts where you can make money Mm -hmm. i think i think too what happens to a lot of people especially a lot of people that are at the beginning of of growing an online presence is is that they get that squirrel factor or like oh look new fun shiny toy syndrome i'm gonna go take a look at that and they they think you know it's almost like the brain is just looking for shortcuts and so they think oh this is new this is where everybody is not recognizing that there is a lot of money that is sitting on the table just with facebook and instagram and once you can really just use the platform correctly enough to actually monetize and grow your business, then you can start having fun with things like, well, what's happening over on TikTok? Let's be honest. TikTok is fun. Yeah. It's super fun. Facebook, Facebook is work. (laughs) Like, I'm sorry. Like it's YouTube is work. Yeah. Online marketing is work. TikTok is fun. Yes. And so if you can hide behind, oh, I'm marketing my brand, doing this fun thing. Yeah, of course we would all do that. But when you call a spade a spade, like Facebook is a work. It's strategic. It's doing, that's why you got to spend time finding the platform that's right for you for starting out on your online journey, because it's the foundation. Because if you have a bad experience at the start, you'll just automatically think, okay, online marketing didn't work for me. When in fact, you just kind of did it wrong or you just picked the wrong horse. One of my closest friends, we've been friends for like nine years. She's one of my one of my business besties. She has tried and spent so much time on so many different platforms and money and resources. Facebook, Facebook pages, Facebook groups, um, Twitter, Instagram, and it, literally years, years of this. She got on LinkedIn. And she started doing these things called condos at her Camry. And it was where she would sit in her car, like when she was like waiting to pick up her kids and she would just give like business advice and tell stories. And they were amazingly well received on LinkedIn. And so she was like, oh, huh. And so she started doing a little bit more and digging a little bit more. And LinkedIn now, LinkedIn is where she spends her time on the internet because she knows that's where she can build business relationships for her coaching business. And so, um, but took her years to get there. And I was literally there along with her through that, through that path. So it's, it's not always easy or straightforward to know like where your people is. That's why you kind of have to test and you have to test for significant amounts of time. Yes, for sure. I think that online, you know, the online space is a blessing and a curse in the sense that it looks, you know, it can oftentimes seem like, oh, this person had overnight success, but you're just looking at the tip of the iceberg. You're not looking at all the work that they had put in it one step at a time before that we, iceberg came through. We joke as YouTube educators and um, in my, in my little YouTube educator sphere, or like, it took me 10 years to become an overnight success. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and it's kind of the same idea. Like 
there are two ways to go online marketing. Like one, you have to have a really good solid foundation with a website and a funnel and a lead capture, all that stuff, right? But once you're past that point, you're looking like, hey, what do I promote? You have to look at social networking and advertising very differently. Advertising mm-hmm. is for immediate results, mm-hmm. right? And I, I say immediate a little loosely, but it's much more direct and targeted and immediate than building a long-term relationship and a brand and expertise in your industry on social. And I think that that's what people get really, they don't really know the difference. And that's why they, ex, they get frustrated when it doesn't work quicker. Mm-hmm. Like it's a long game. Social media marketing is a long game. Mm-hmm. And it's fun. No, it's long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I also tell my people too, that, that you want to enjoy the process and not always be going for the outcome because you're going to spend more time in the process than you are on the outcome. So the faster you can start really thinking about, you know, looking at this social networking and, and, and marketing and advertising and the faster you can look at that and say, how can I figure this out? This is fun. This is where I'm spending my time. Like creating content is my favorite part of my business. Because that's where I, that's where I'm going to be spending all my time. I'm not necessarily, you know, but if I'm thinking about like, oh, how do I get more likes? How do I get more engagement? How do I blah, 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 blah. And it starts to become unfun. Then why? Go get a job. (laughs) It's easier. So this has been amazing. And I wanted to say thank you so much for your time because uh, I want to be very mindful of it. Cause like you said, we can't get time back, but we can always make more money. True. So, uh, where, if my people want to learn more about you, where can I send them? Uh, best place to go to connect with me and find out all about my stuff is Mrs. Desiree Rose.com. That's M R S D E S I R E E R O S E.com. Okay. Awesome. So of course we're going to link all that stuff up in the show notes. So Desiree, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. And guys, remember, I know it's hard and I know it can seem like a pain in the butt and it's always changing, but I promise when you put the time in, you pay attention, it's totally worth it. Facebook is a great place for you to grow your business. Friends, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. So if you like this video, chances are your friends will too. So be sure to share it with your friends on your favorite social media networks. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe, hit like, and let us know in the comments below what you loved about this interview. I'll catch you on the next video.